Welcome back to the Dad Chronicle, where we share stories from dads all around the world. I'm your host, Alex Albisu, and this is episode 94. On today's episode, I speak with Jamie Brand. Now, if you listen to Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett's morning show called The Morning Stream, you probably know Jamie better as TMS Mashups. He contributes to the show by creating funny mashups of all the funny stuff that those guys say. It's hilarious. It happens every Monday. Uh, you can watch the show live over at frogpants.tv. Uh, but today we get a peek at a different side of Jamie, one of a father who loves his two kids deeply, even though he has a really hard time bonding with one of them. We start out by talking about how Jamie worked hard to reprioritize what was important in his life when he became a dad. You never really realize your own shortcomings as a person until you have another life that kind of de depends on you. Next, we talk about how he had a different bond with his daughter when she was born compared to his son. It seemed like my relationship with my daughter was more organic and natural, whereas my relationship with my son has always been something that, I mean, I obviously love him with all my heart, but I have to work at the relationship a little bit more. Whereas my, the one with my daughter has always come kind of naturally from the get-go. And that's always been a source of contention in my head. Jamie shares how he builds a bond with his son, even though they oftentimes butt heads. Him and I just love to love to butt heads. Um, but I always try and just sit him down once in a while and let him know that, you know, I, I, I never stop loving him. And that even though we butt heads sometimes, that uh, he's always my little guy. And finally, Jamie reflects on how he was raised by his own father and how that has influenced the way that he parents his two kids. My relationship with my dad, there's parallels between how um, how I deal with, uh, with Jackson. Here's my conversation with Jamie Brand. Jamie Brand, also known as TMS Mashups. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thanks for being on the show. It's been good getting to know you over the past several months. Um, you and I are both members of the Tadpool, and uh, you are known for all of the shenanigans that you capture from those fellas over at the Morning Stream and uh, and all the, the the gold content, and you mash all that up. It's really fun. So I love, really do. Yeah. love what you do. Why don't you take just a quick moment, though, to let people know who you are outside of that? Oh, well, I uh, father of two. I have my... I have my daughter, Ember. She's four. Uh, and my son, Jackson, he's six. Um, and I work, uh, I actually drive bus full time for a living. That's what pays the bills. Oh, wow. Uh, my mashups. Uh, yeah, my mashups is, uh, is a fun little uh, monetized hobby, as I like to call it. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been driving bus for about uh, going on almost 13 years now. Very cool, man. I, I love that. And you've got two beautiful kids. I've seen pictures and uh, Thank I, I you. love I love seeing pictures of the family and such. So why don't we uh, mm -hmm. why don't we take a, a trip down memory lane a little bit? Let's go back in time. Six years ago, you become mm -hmm. a dad. Take us yes. through what that was like for you meeting Jackson for the first time. It was uh, it was a trip and a half. Um, yeah, my wife and I had just gotten married. Uh, you know, less than about you know about a year a year prior. And you know, a lot of emotions uh, uh, come over you when you see your a kid for the first time, and it was um, yeah, it was nuts. You know, I was a, I was a dad and uh, had no idea what I was doing. Um, you know, I had to lean on the lean on the wife a lot back in those days, and um, yeah, it was actually uh, the first six months of my son's life was uh, a really rocky time for fatherhood and marriage in general. So yeah, <laughs> yeah that was a rough rough time. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, when you held your son for the first time, you mentioned that there were just a lot of emotions there. I think that that's pretty common when you talk to a lot of folks who go into this parenting thing um, for the first time. Tell me, like, when you became a dad for the first time, what was the biggest challenge for you? Biggest challenge for me was kind of getting over myself. Um, you never really realize, uh, like your own shortcomings as a person until you have another life that kind of de depends on you. And, uh, um, I was, you know, I never really considered myself a selfish person. Um, but I was definitely, there was definitely a lot of self centeredness on my part as, as a part, you know, as far as like, um, you know, getting up in the middle of the night, uh, when he needed help and stuff like that, you know, I really, really wanted to uh, push it off on the wife, Back in the, you know, back in those early days, you know, like, uh, oh, yeah, we were, the, you know, and this is so, this is not the way it's supposed to be. But in my head, I'm like, 
well, no, this this is the motherly duties. The mom should be doing this, you know, the, the midnight wakes, wake up and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, my marriage would not have lasted much longer had I, you know, kept that particular frame of mind. But uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I learned a lot about myself and I had to do a lot of growing up very quickly in those uh, beginning months. Well, well, good on you. And thanks for sharing that. I think that that's pretty common amongst a lot of people, um, what you experienced. What do you think was uh, a, a good force for you to tap into? You know, if you're if I'm thinking about others who are listening to this show saying, you know, maybe feeling a similar feeling uh, as a new parent, what would you tell them? Uh, it all comes down to um, what life what life you want your kids to have. And I really did think back to my own childhood. Um, and, you know, I really want the best for my son and, you know, I want him to grow up and, you know, be able to look back on, I want to be able to look back on the time I spent with him and be proud of it. I don't want to look back and be like, and have regrets on how, on decisions that I made or didn't make. And, uh, yeah, like it's, I've always considered myself a family man and, you know, love, love having kids and watching them grow up. And it's just a matter of, you know, taking that perspective and being okay, well, you know, it's not about me. It hasn't been about me since uh, August 8th, 2013. And yeah, it's all about just, uh, you know, just learning one day at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I love how introspective that is because we don't know what we're doing <laughs> those first few days of becoming a parent. No. Uh, and everybody goes through that. So, and here you are two later, uh, you're, you're still alive here. What was it like meeting your daughter for the first time? Ember. Uh, it was much different. Um, and, uh, I'm still trying to parse why it was different, but, um, I had a very different, uh, relationship with her kind of like from right from the word go, you know, I didn't really want to be as involved with, uh, with things with when my son was born, but that got turned on its head when my daughter was born. And I was like, you know, Oh, you know, I'll do the full bedtime. And, uh, you know, my wife wanted to sleep at night. So I would sleep in the living room. And she would sleep in this little rock and play next to me. And I would like sleep there so that if she woke up, I'd be right there to like help her out kind of thing. And um, it seemed like my relationship with my daughter was more organic and natural. Whereas my relationship with my son has always been something that, I mean, I obviously love him with all my heart, but I have to work at the relationship a little bit more. Whereas my, the one with my daughter has always come kind of naturally from the get go. And that's always been a source of contention in my head. Because I never want to feel, I never want my kids to feel that I play favorites. And I do not play favorites. But one relationship does come more easily than the other. Yeah, that's a very interesting dynamic. Something that I haven't experienced because we only have Aria at this point. You know, God willing, we'll have another one at some point. But I think <laughs> it would be uh, it would be a very interesting dynamic because for me, Aria is, it's so easy with me and Aria. Like, she run like when I walk in the room, just for instance, I'll be just in a different room and I'll walk in the room, daddy. And like she f freaking runs over and it's a melt your heart sort of situation. And that might mm -hmm. be, you know, it might be like a daddy's girl sort of vibe happening uh, to where it is easy. And I always wonder, like, if I had a son, if that would be different. What do you think it is? Like, what do you think that attribute is that that makes it so easy for you had to have a relationship with Ember? Um, well, I think in stark contrast, um, one of the reasons uh, that my relationship with my son is so trying sometimes is that him and I are um, basically two sides of the same coin. We're, we're like we're basically the same the same person. Um, you know, we're both very strong willed. Uh, always want to do what we want to do. We don't want to be told what to do. Um, and I think you know that whole opposites attract. Um, and the same kind of repel. So him and I are so similar that we butt heads all the time. And whereas my daughter is, you know, similar enough to me in certain respects, but different and different than me in other respects where we just sort of, we just sort of jive. Um, and I don't, I don't find myself fighting her on every little thing, you know, like my son, for instance, will, um, put up a fuss about something and, uh, you know, dig his heels in. And then I get my back up and I dig my heels in more because daddy has to be right. Right. Um, and I'm like really firm and put my foot down, but in this exact same situation with my daughter and she you know, puts up a fight and says, no, I'm like, ah, it's not worth it. And I kind of, I'll let it go. And then 
I'll look back on that objectively, that same situation, and I'll be like, why is it different when Ember does the exact same thing? Why do you not put up a fight when she does it, that when Jackson does it, you get all up in arms? Like, I've often, I often uh, put this through my head, this kind of like filter on uh, why that relationship is so different uh, between the two kids. Why do you think that is? Like, if you were to just kind of look at it very just, uh, try, try to look at it almost from a third-person perspective, what do you think that is? Uh, yeah, I've often, wife and I talk about this all the time. Um, I think it comes down to, I have, I'll have a lot of expectations um, and a sort of, like, things that I want my son to achieve. And I feel like on a really um, base level, um, I'm trying to set him up for success. And, you know, I really want him to be the best man that he can be. And I feel like I need to coach him um, on that. Like, I really need to kind of push him along. Whereas I feel like with Ember, it I don't know, it feels like I still obviously still want the same things for her as I do for Jackson. But I feel like I don't need to push Ember as much because she's going along that path kind of on her own um, already kind of thing. Uh, it is really hard to hard to parse and but there's something on a subconscious level that is at play for sure i think well i think at the very core of it from what you're telling me it sounds like just straight up love there's obviously so much love for this kid and you just want to see him succeed uh that Absolutely. is that is so apparent in everything that you just said what are some of the ways that you are actively like proactively trying to i want to be careful about how i phrase this because i don't know if there's necessarily anything different that you need to do Right. Like it's almost like how how do you make sure that you're doing it in the right way to where he's not just seeing you as being just kind of a hard ass for being a hard ass? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, what I try to do, especially with Jackson, because he um, he he loves uh, he's an, he's always wants to know that he is doing a good job. He loves to hear um, po like positive reinforcement. And, uh, you know, that he's doing a good job, right? And I'm very much the same way. I love um, positive affirmation. Uh, you know, like, if I do something good, you know, I'll be like, oh, look what I did, look what I did, you know. Um, and my wife gets after me of that all the time because I always need that, uh, their positive reinforcement. So what I try to do with Jackson especially is uh, I have to take him aside sometimes and I have to sit him on my lap and we have to sort of have this uh, this this little talk where I say, you know, like, hey, you know, dad, you know, Jackson, you know, daddy loves you, right? And he's just like, yeah. And I'm like, it's like, I know, I know that daddy gets frustrated with you sometimes, right? But, um, you know, I'm just trying to do what's best for you. And, you know, sometimes you and I butt heads a lot, you know, and it doesn't mean that I don't love you. It just means that daddy gets frustrated and, you know, daddy wants what wants what's best for you. And then we kind of have this little moment and, uh, you know, and I give him a hug and, um, I kind of just, you know, trying to like level with him um, every once in a while because uh, tempers fly sometimes and, you know, I get super busy and, you know, I'm not, I, yeah, I don't always keep my cool. Him and I just love to, love to butt heads. Um, but I always try and just sit him down once in a while and let him know that, you know, I, I, I never stop loving him and that even though we butt heads sometimes that uh, he's always my little guy. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the five love languages? I have, and I actually was talking about that with my wife yesterday, where um, Jack, one of Jackson's love languages is... Uh, um, words of affirmation? Words of affirmation, absolutely, yep. yeah. Yeah, that's... And so, so is yours, and so is mine. And yes. so I hear all this, and it's very... Uh, it, it resonates a lot with me, because um, I have a feeling Aria is also words of affirmation, uh, where, you know, my daughter loves to kind of look at me at the end of, at the end of like doing a thing and say, look, daddy, I did it. I did it. And like me sh showing appreciation or gratitude goes such a long way. And I'll tell you what, if she does something wrong and I call her out on it, that breaks her heart. And mm -hmm. I think that right there shows how much a kid loves and respects you, you know, like when they are able to take criticism um in the right level and, and uh and, and be able to 
show that sort of emotion when they react you know it's okay like at the end of the day if they cry if they did something wrong because that shows that they did something that you didn't appreciate and you and you showed them that you didn't appreciate that um does he does he have that sense of uh, uh, regret i guess i guess it would be like regret right like if if you if you discipline him in a way that is you know showing that hey you didn't do this thing right like does it show in on his face and emotionally and then how do you deal with that yeah, he um, he always he always wants us to be proud of him. You know, if I really want to drive the point home, um, you know, usually we just have to we just have to say, uh, you know, like you know, Jackson, we're you no, know, I disappointed. You know, and that really does um, resonate with him. And you know, and I kind of just have to be like, you know, but you know, we can try harder next time, right? And I try and show him, you know, how we can do things differently in the future. Um, so that we can get a different outcome. And like right now we're dealing with, a, a, the biggest thing we're dealing with him right now is, is, uh, is telling the truth and integrity um, because he is uh, going through the lying stage um, and we're trying to uh, rid him of this lie that, it, that uh, um, lying will get him out of trouble. Like if, he, if, he, if he lies, he's not going to get in as much trouble as if he told the truth. And we're trying to tell him, no, the exact opposite of that is true. If you tell the truth, yes, we're going to be frustrated. Yeah, we might be annoyed, but we'll respect you for telling the truth and you will get in less trouble as a result, you know? Mm -hmm. So we try to turn these all into teachable moments for him. That's so important. I think I think a lot about how things were handled when I was a kid, whether it was right or wrong. Um, you know, like if I were to be uh scolded or reprimanded from doing a specific like like if i was i you know we all went through the lying phase i i did a lot as, as a kid you know admittedly me too and mm -hmm. um i think a lot about my own kids growing up and how i am going to deal with that there are a lot of moments where i think back when i was a kid that it, it was almost scarring it's almost uh it, it, it's just it's hard to think back then and say yeah uh that was handled right or wrong from my parents' perspective because, you know, it's hard being in the moment as a parent. Do you feel like you approach things differently uh, based on the way that you were perhaps uh, reprimanded or, or disciplined or whatever as a kid? It's so funny you brought that up. Um, well, I, I do try and do things differently, but sometimes I find myself doing them exactly the same way. Me too, as dude. I was reprimanded as a kid. And then oh, I see my parents um, through what I'm doing, especially my dad through what I'm doing. And in those moments, I kind of like, I kind of check myself and I'm like, is this the father you want to be? Um, and it's not necessarily something super bad, right? It's just, uh, you know, I want to be the best father I can be to both my kids. And so when I'm doing something that I didn't like, particularly as a kid, when my parents did it to me or said to me or whatever, um, I sort of check myself in that moment. And I do try, um, uh, I do try to do things differently. Like the one thing, um, that I wanted more than anything growing up was just being able to, um, just to be able to do things, um, with my dad. You know, one thing I remember is, um, a vivid memory of trying to get my dad just to play a game of cards with me. Right. It seems really silly, but it really meant a lot to me to be able to sit down and play a game of like go fish with a game with a deck of cards. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of the time, you know, he'd be too busy and I wouldn't get to play my game of cards. Right. So even though, yeah, now, um, I, life gets super busy and I don't always get a chance to do that, but I really do try to call myself on being available to both my kids when they want to just sit down and play a game or, you know, Jackson wants to play some Mario Kart or, or whatever, and try to make sure that I'm available for them when they want that, because that quality time together is really important. I think that is such a resounding theme that tends to come up in this show where mm -hmm. I talk to dads about, or parents in general, because even, you know, like the women who have been on this show talking about their perspectives, like, uh, this whole idea of coming home from work, you're tired. All you want to do is just sit down and have some peace and quiet and like mm -hmm. even Audie uh, who was on the phone was who was like you know sometimes I just want to sit on my phone and just look at something and veg out for five minutes and I can't do that but yeah. at the end of the day 
when you think about the time, that limited time that you have with your kids at that phase, it breaks your heart a little bit to think that way. How do you, how do you uh, get past that? Do you, do you have any ideas or suggestions? I'm still in it, man. That's, that's a, that's an ocean that I'm still in. I'm, I'm, I'm in my little dinghy and I'm, uh, and I'm still floating out in that water. Um, I'm just, I'm painfully aware of it every day. You know, it's like, God, me, too. Um, me too, dude. A lot of, yeah. Yeah. It's like bad. a lot of, I'm not, I'm not complacent to it. Um, you know, and I'm not going to paint myself as the perfect parent and say that, you know, every time I get home from work, I'm in the, I'm the model dad sitting down and, you know, doing one-on-one stuff with my kids. Like it's, it's, it's really hard because you're, you're completely spent. You know, I leave my house at, um, 4 20 AM in the morning. I don't get home. Um, I get home in the afternoon. I got a little bit of time before my son comes home and then I have to do all my prep and stuff like that for the next day. Then I have to go back out with my hand to get my daughter from daycare, come home, do dinner, um, feed them dinner, clean up after dinner, put them to bed, do bath and bedtimes and stuff like that. And then I'm in bed by eight 30, um, you know, eyes closed at nine and, you know, rinse, repeat the next day. And, uh, it's hard finding that quality time to, um, to put in there. Um, but I really do try and make sure that like when my son comes home between the time that he's home and we have to leave to get my daughter, that I try and spend some time with him, um, some quality time with him in that window, um, um, every day, you know, even if it's just him and I sitting there and he's doing his reading and his writing exercises that we do, uh, after school, just try and spend that quality time together and, you know, listen to him talk about something that went on at school um, and just, you know, just listen because the one, <laughs> the one thing I really need to work on with him, uh, actually in general with my kids is just, is just listening, um, to what they have to say and caring on a, on a, on a sort of deep level about what they're actually talking about. So they feel heard. Um, and not just that, you know, they're talking one ear out the other sort of thing, you know, that is so true. I sometimes find myself thinking I'm hearing Aria, but I might be looking at my phone for some reason. And mm-hmm. this two and a half year old girl will walk up to me and take my phone out of my hand and make me <laughs> listen to her. Yes. And I, exactly. don't, I, and I think to myself, I'm like, it, it breaks my heart, dude. It breaks my heart mm-hmm. because I'm like, what am I doing where I am thinking that whatever is in front of me right now, like work or anything involving like social media is, is more important than what this girl is telling me right now. Like it, it kills me. And that's something that, yeah, like we talked about it and, and it's always going to be a work in progress for us to be present. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I think that in, in implementing a lot of the the suggestions and, and I've learned a lot from people who have come on the show talking about anything from meditation to centering practices, therapy, everything like that, uh, to kind of help figure out how you can better center yourself and be present and in the moment is, uh, is really valuable. So that's, that's been a good byproduct of this show. I think for me personally, listen to all of these uh, stories. So I, I always like to ask dads for, you know, some words of wisdom coming out of this show, just thinking about your own situation, your own experiences and how you've built relationships with your kids, very different relationships and the ways that you've had to develop these bonds um, has been very starkly different uh, experiences. So Mm -hmm. what would you tell somebody listening to this show who may be in a similar predicament as you are uh, to give them either words of encouragement or advice or or whatever you think would help them? I would say just, uh, you know, don't take yourself too seriously. Um, Embrace the fact that you are not perfect and you never will be perfect and always be willing to work on yourself um, every day because I feel like um, your kids will be teaching you um, how to be a better parent, um, you know, right up until the day you die. I don't think you ever stop learning and um, yeah, always be willing, always be willing to better yourself. And, you know, if somebody has some good advice that you can apply to your life, um, always be open to that. Um, I'm always, I'm always trying to be, you know, willing to take, you know, uh, criticism from family with a, you know, grain of salt, you know, anything that I can sort of apply to my life to be uh, a better dad to my kids. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I think it's, it's interesting when family gets involved, 
there's sometimes a tendency to get defensive. Um, this has been my own experience where you're like, yeah, but you know, th- just don't don't worry about the way I'm I'm raising my kid, you know. Um, and then I, I hear other people and it and it comes off different for some reason. And I think a lot of that has to do with you know thinking back to when you were raised, um, or at least you know speaking for myself, it's like when I was raised, I saw a lot of things that were done really really well, and then some things that I'm like, I, if I if I ever get into that situation with my kid, I, I'm going to do it differently. Um, but I think that we should take stock of what our parents and, and some of the others in our family have gone through because it's, uh, it, it's no different than hearing it from anybody else. Um, that's Absolutely. Something that, that's something I've, I've internalized a lot. Um, mm-hmm. you know, one of the, one of the things I constantly think about, you know, not just my own family, uh, and, and the great parenting that I've experienced growing up from my dad and talking to like Deanna's dad, who uh, has a, a really fascinating story and perspective on fatherhood. I also look mm-hmm. at a lot of the folks in like the Frog Pants community. I don't know about you, but like, you know, like I think about a lot of the ways Scott relates to Carter. Um, it, it just seems like there's just this natural love and and uh it's something that just like they they just have this kindred spirit sort of relationship um that he's talked about uh mm-hmm. and, and when you were kind of talking about how easily it was for you to relate to ember that's something that resonated a bit and i kind of feel the same way with aria where it's just mm-hmm. there's something that like the kid and i could just be inseparable and like that's just the way it works um yeah yeah you just brought up an interesting point um it harkens me back to my own childhood um, and how my relationship with my dad um, is sort of the uh, is, there's parallels between how um, how I deal with uh, with Jackson and how um, my dad and I are super close now, but it it took a while to get there. And my dad told has told me many times that he actually he struggled a lot um, with me when I was younger. Um, you know, on, on ways to relate to me. And it didn't happen as naturally with him either. Um, my dad bonded really easily with my sister, um, who's two years younger than me. Um, and those two um, have a different relationship than my, him, than my dad and me. Um, but, uh, you know, he's always had this sort of like easy relationship with my, with my sister, Sarah. Um, you know, and him, yeah, my dad and I had to really work on that. And him and I are super close now. But every single time I see myself struggling with my son, um, I can't help but see that parallel. And I think that really does keep me in check because, um, you know, I'm not really, I'm not happy with a lot of the stuff that went down um, in my childhood. And I definitely want better um, for my own son. And, you know, I really want to make sure that he always feels loved and doesn't feel second best um, uh, to his sister. You know, I never want him to feel that way. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. that's really profound, that parallel experience, because I think that gives you a better understanding, seeing that you are in the situation today that your son could be in 30 plus years from today. Absolutely. With yeah. you. Not necessarily that, that there's going to be 30 years of any sort of a tumultuous relationship, and I'm not saying that you and your dad had a tumultuous <laughs> relationship, and you, you may mm-hmm. have, but that's... You know, what's the point is, is that you have this opportunity to see what went wrong and write it, uh, set, set the right course. Exactly. You yeah. Know what I mean, that, that, that is so empowering. And that's a testament, I think, to your ability to, um, observe and reflect on what has happened. And I think that that's great. You know, I want to give you an opportunity also because, uh, we're, we're both, we, we've had a lot of folks from the tadpole on this show. Um, Brian and Scott from TMS have been on this show. Uh, if you guys at home listen to, uh, to the morning stream, you could go to frogpants.com slash TMS. Uh, we've had like the entire cast of characters on the dad Chronicle. So I've had, uh, you, you've heard on Monday afternoons, they have this wonderful mashup that Jamie puts together and I, and I wanted to take just a, a moment to talk about your creative passion here because it's something that I enjoy too. How did you get into the frog pants stuff? Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I started listening to um, 
CMS back in 2015 um, and just fell in love with it right away. And the, one of the things I started hearing um, every Monday during Stump a Truck Nerd was uh, um, Ice Worm had put together these little quick little mashups um, of stuff they would say. Um, and it was usually just, you know, 45 seconds of, uh, of just wiener comments taken out of context. Um, and I just love the concept of that. Uh, and I, I have a background in, um, uh, remixing and mashing up, um, music. I used to do a lot of music mashups, um, back in the day. So this concept is sort of, uh, um, followed me. And so I'd always had in the back of my mind, um, how I would do the mashups for the show. If I had an opportunity to do them, I, I had the music picked out, um, and how I, you know, how I'd edit them together. But my, my stopping point was, you know, oh, I, I'm never able to copy them down. I'm always busy doing something when I'm listening to the show. I can't write them down or whatever. But then I started doing this thing where I would write down the time code of, the, of said comment and I would keep track of them um, throughout the week. And then I would go back on the weekend, uh, clip everything out, edit it all together and have it in the folder ready for uh, Scott and Brian um ready for monday morning and it's sort of been this system that i've been doing um for about uh about two years now and it's a well-oiled machine um gathering clips together and editing them editing them together and putting them up on the uh on the stream for the tide pool on mondays yeah and, and you've even turned it into like a little side hustle for you and i think that's so cool um people yeah. who who listen to tms um where can they go to support you well, I do have my my Patreon, so it's patreon.com slash TMS mashups. Um, it is everything. Everything helps. It's uh, nice to have some support from my community. Um, and also I have my website that uh, the Patreon helped launch, um, tmsmashups.com. So all of the stuff that I've done for Frog Pants is up there. I have all the Monday morning mashups. I've got my you know the old fireside stories all the scott play stuff all the bonus mashups they're all up on the website i love it dude i love it and and yeah go check him out on uh, on patreon go listen to uh the morning stream mondays uh jamie's segment ends up on there and it's always so fun dude it's, it's honestly is a highlight for me on mondays so i appreciate what you do there Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, uh, and and how about this? Before we end, is, is there any way that you would recommend people uh, follow you on social media? What's the best way to do that? Yeah, they can follow me on Twitter. I'm at TMS Mashups there. Um, and as I said, uh, all of my stuff is available at TMSMashups.com. And uh, yeah, hit me up on the on the Patreon. Same thing, patreon.com slash TMS Mashups. Awesome. And our guest today has been Jamie Brand. Jamie, thank you so much for sharing um, s some great wisdom and uh, and your story. I think it's really important to talk about how some of this stuff just doesn't come as easy. Some of these relationships with your kids don't come as easy as you want them to. Um, and, and your story has, I'm sure, resonated with a lot of people that are listening to this right now. So thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you for having me. Special thanks again to our guest, Jamie Brand, for being so open and transparent on the challenges that he's had as a parent. I think it's really important to talk about these things. And I welcome you to chime in on the conversation as well. Just email the dad chronicle podcast at gmail.com. And I also welcome you to check out his work over at tmsmashups.com. If you enjoyed what you listened to today, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast provider that you're listening to this show on. And consider supporting the show monetarily. If you head over to thedadchronicle.com, there's a link there to become a patron. And we have a lot of awesome rewards and exclusive content for our patrons. Special thanks to all of our patrons who have been supporting us to this date. And if you'd like to chime in on the conversation that we had today, as I mentioned earlier, just email the Dad Chronicle Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. If you like this show, check out more great content at incastmedianetwork.com.